Hey friends, hello, happy Thursday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. Holy smokes, it's gonna be a fun, fun tutorial today. So I see everybody popping in. Good vibes, uh, Cherie just said good vibes. Yes, good vibes. So today I'm doing something a little bit different with the tutorials. Normally we focus, well, not normally, but usually, my tutorials every week are focused around watercolor techniques and we make a card project together or a paper crafting project together. Today, I'm doing something different. I'm testing out some different things that I wanna, want to share with you. And I've been talking about it for a while, but today we are going to, I'm going to do a paint along. Um, you don't have to paint along with me, but I am going to paint a project live, just a painting, and I'm going to talk about watercolor techniques along the way. So if you're on my email list, I sent out the illustration of what I'm doing today. So you can watch today and maybe paint it another time. Um, and if you have questions along the way about that download, let me know. If you're not on my email list, no worries. Um, pop something in the chat or actually in, in the description, I have my email subscribe link. You can head on over there. And if you're a new subscriber, I'll make sure you get the outline of the drawing today, the illustration, the sunflower illustration after today. Okay, so I see people popping in. Yeah, this is something a little bit different for this channel. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Kathy. Cherie. Kathy McDonald. We've got two Kathys. Rhonda. Dan. Yeah. Um, Dawn. Hey, Dawn. Dawn's over on the West Coast, so it's early. Yeah. And hey, Rhonda. So I see a bunch of people popping in, so that's exciting. If you have a question along the way, j just type question in the comments. Um, my questions show up over there, so if I'm on camera with you and my gaze goes that way, that's because that's because the questions are there. But we're just gonna get we're just gonna get started and dive in, and I'm hoping I can finish this painting in an hour. Okay, let's go ahead and head to the overhead camera. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the supplies. The supplies are linked down below in the description. Hi, Elizabeth, uh, here on YouTube and on Facebook. So, and I'm gonna go over them, but remember, if you're painting along with me, because you have the illustration, um, no worries, use the supplies that you have in your stash. Everything I'm using today doesn't is not dependent on the success or failure of the painting that I'm creating. We're having some fun today. Okay, let's go ahead to our overhead camera, and I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough. So today, I am using, let me move this keyboard. I am using the Canson Heritage 140 pound, 100% uh, pure cotton cardstock, um, watercolor paper. Let's go ahead and move that over. And I have my illustration on there. Now, the cool thing about this kind of paper, watercolor paper, is that it's on a block. Okay, so it is, all of the paper is glued onto a block, so it makes it really super easy to work with. And also when it dries, it will dry, so as I, ever, everything gets super wet along the way, when it dries, it's just going to um, dry flat, which is nice. So here's another brand. Arsha's brand. I was going to use the, that this one today, but I changed my mind because I opened it up and I still have this painting in progress that I I haven't finished this hydrangea painting and I haven't figured out where I'm going with it. So I didn't want to take it off of the block yet. All right, so we're using Canson Heritage today. Now this is a really really super nice paper. But um, sometimes I, I'm challenged by it and I struggle with it. So I wanted to challenge myself today to work with it. Okay, so here's the painting that we're gonna do. Um, when I actually showed it, when I actually first did it, I did it this way and it like was super wonky. A lot of times when my paintings, 
my paintings, in my opinion, start to look like crabs because I end up with all this wonky leafery. But then sometimes if you just keep turning your painting around, you find the the composition that's more pleasing to the eye. So this is what we're going to paint today. It's wild. It's wonky. We're going to, we're not going for perfection. We're just going to have some fun. Now, the colors that I'm using today, I'm using Da Vinci paints from my stash. And this is, this is the Da Vinci, um, I've shared this many times, little pan set that I personally set up. So the, this is what I did the original painting with. But I went ahead and pulled some of those colors out, pulled some of those tubes out, and these are the colors I'm going to be working with. I've got Hansa Yellow Deep, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Gold, Hansa Yellow Lemon. That looks really bright. Denise's Green, Paraline Green. I forgot to put this as Green Gold. So I'm going to use a combination of these, or not. I'm not sure yet. Joyce's Mother Green. These two colors, Denise's Green and Joyce's Mother Green, are exclusive to Da Vinci watercolors because they are they are mixes that they did in combination with some other watercolor artists. Um, Alizarin Crimson and Paraline Maroon. So you can these are common names that you can find and um, in other brands. But remember, you're just working with yellows and browns, some greens, and a couple reds. And we may or may not use the reds. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I see more people popping in. Sue popped in. Hello, Irma. Mary. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that you're not feeling well. So I hope you feel better soon. And you're, you're banished to your bedroom. Well, I hope you feel better soon. And I hope that you find today kind of entertaining and... The watercolor techniques valuable along the way. All right, I've got a bunch of brushes. I'm going to be using probably these Princeton Heritage brushes. This one and probably this one, the number 10. Oh, these are round brushes. Or I've got this new faux squirrel brush from Zen Art. I've been trying this out. This is a number eight round. I'm probably going to use that one too. I also have um, some of the silver black velvets. So we'll see. Just grab the brushes that you have in your stash. I've taken all of those colors that I mentioned and I just put a little dot of them out on this porcelain, porcelain plate that I have. And I put the dot of the paint towards the bottom here because I'm going to use this well to add the water to get that ratio. We're going to talk about the water ratios. I've talked about this so many times. Many of you, I recognize all, all of our names today. Many of you have heard me talk about um, water ratios. Well, we're going to be using that again today. So, okay. Now, let's just go ahead and dive in. Now, this is the illustration that I sent. I'm going to start with the Zen Art brush. This is one of, this is from Zen Art. It's a faux squirrel brush. I found that it holds a lot of water. It's a pretty reasonably priced brush. So we're just gonna play with this today. I'm gonna start in the middle. Am I gonna start in the middle? No. Yeah, we're gonna start in the middle. Okay, we're just gonna get going. So here's our reference. Okay, here's my reference photo over here. And I'll talk a little bit about the colors that I'm pulling in as we go along. I'm going to start with some burnt sienna. So I have burnt sienna and quinacridone gold here. Now, the burnt sienna from Da Vinci, I just absolutely love it. Now, what I didn't do is spray my colors to kind of get them activated. But you can see how easily that color gets activated. We're going to do predominantly wet into wet techniques today. And that means my brush is wet, my paper's dry right now, but I'm just going to tap in some color. Now, when I did the illustration, when I drew it onto the watercolor paper, just know that I did this a lot darker than I normally would because I wanted this to show up for our painting today. But what I'm going to end up doing once it's dry is I'll take a little eraser and I'll just um, 
take some of those marks away. Now I've gotten the center of this sunflower, this wonky sunflower. I've just added a little bit of a little bit of water and I'm just dropping in some of that Da Vinci paint, just letting it do its thing. Now today, today's painting is all just about play and just kind of discovery. Now a lot of my paintings are wild and wonky. I have painted many things that were botanical and accurate in nature. This is not one of those paintings. Botanical paintings, there's some really amazing botanical artists. So I really like the whimsical nature of these kind of paintings. It's wild, it's wonky, it's whimsical, and that is my style. Also, um, take a little bit of this quinacridone gold just kind of drop some of that in the middle and let that play with that burnt sienna a little bit and we're just going to leave it be we're just going to leave this the way it is you can see how it's running a little bit running to the edges I'm still using this faux squirrel brush I'm kind of digging it um zen art reached out to me i purchased this set um off of amazon and it's the black tola um watercolor brush set and it was really 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 reasonably reasonably priced um and if i didn't link that up down below i will but zen art recently reached out to me they wanted to send me some of their newer miniature brushes to try and see what i thought so we'll try them and we'll see what i think um so we'll go from there okay now i'm going to work with the petals here and I'm going to work with every other petal. And I'm just taking, again, water. And I'm not painting in, we're going to come in with the Hansa Yellow Deep. I'm not painting the entire petal with water. I'm just kind of tapping in some color. And just leaving some of that white. for the petal because we're going to play with this a little bit and I'm not very concerned you can see some of the color oh I love it I'm just dropping this in I'd love to know if you're painting along with me um, or you're painting this later so drop it in the comments drop it in the chat what you are doing you might just be watching and having some fun with this. I'm going to go every other petal here and I'm dropping in a bunch of water at the same time. You can see I'm just kind of just being very loose. Hansa Yellow Deep, dropping that color in and the watercolor is just coaxing it into just the areas where the water is. And this is our first layer in the painting and it's just giving the painting shape. Ah, Cherie just said she's going to paint it later. Excellent. Yeah, I'm trying something new, friends, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. I wanted to, a lot of this channel, a lot of the content on this channel is focused on watercolor techniques for our paper crafting projects, and I absolutely won't be changing that but I wanted to add, Kathy is painting along for now. Cool. Paint along, paint along. I absolutely will not be changing. Ooh, it's pretty wet. This faux squirrel brush, it holds a lot of water, which is kind of nice. Catherine just shared that she always watched. Ah, so you can see how I hold the brush. Oh, good. Good point, Catherine. So I could talk a little bit about holding the brush. You can see this brush is a little bit, has a little bit of a longer, um, it's just a little bit of a longer brush compared to like some of these other short handled brushes, which is fine. So I'm choking up a little bit. <laughs> so you just said, I'm watching and thinking how I can use this with a large floral stick. Um, yeah, absolutely. Remember, all the techniques that I share, you can adapt 
to any of the larger floral stamps that you have in your stash because I'm just talking about techniques and I'm actually just doing a painting. Okay, wet into wet technique. Adding some water to the paper. You can see I'm just kind of going back and forth, kind of resisting the urge to go back and forth like this, like in a painting swooshy style. I'm just dropping in the color and just letting it do its thing. Uh, I love it. Most of you are uh, enjoying the painting and watching and then uh, adapting the techniques to your projects later, which I think is fantastic. So back to the channel. So what I'm, what I'd like to do is perhaps once a month have a paint along where I'm just kind of, I dive into a lot of different techniques watercolor techniques for paper crafting projects. And we're working with a smaller bit of real estate, right? We're working with a small A2 sized card. Right now I'm just dropping some water in and letting the water do its thing. But when we're working with a smaller A2 sized card, you know, we have a small amount of real estate. If I take some time and do some tutorials like this on the channel, I'm able to talk a little bit more about painting. And oh, look at that little blue sh right out of the gate. Got a little bit of perylene maroon, no, perylene green. I'm able to talk a little bit more and go into a little bit more depth. And you can kind of see a painting come to life. And I think it's kind of fun because I'm painting with you real time and we're doing something together. Doing something to craft your joy together. All right, I've got some other petals. Now, I started off with this Hansa Yellow Deep, which is a kind of like a, it's not a, it's more of an orangey yellow. It's a very common name. You might find that in your in your watercolor sets. I'm actually using some of the paint that's already here and dropping it into those spaces. All right, I'm gonna leave this the way it is. We kind of have that first layer going. And we're gonna add some layers so that we can start to bring the petals, but this is layer number one. We'll eventually go in and do another layer and do some glazing, which is layering and adding some more definition and detail. But while this is going, we're gonna move on to some of the petals. And I'm just, I got a lot of water. This Canson paper is really nice. It's got some texture to it. I feel like I fight with it a little bit sometimes. If I'm going for like precision, if I'm going for really intense precision in my painting. But when I'm doing these washi paintings, I feel like the paper does a really good job. It holds water. I'm going to, I think I can tip this up a little bit and you can see how much water is there. It's also bubbling up a little bit in the center, but because it's on this block, the paper with the water is going to stretch and when it dries, it can't move. So it ends up drying flat. So this, and when I pull it off, you can see it ends up drying pretty flat. All right, I just nerded out about the paper. So let's go ahead and move on and do a little bit of, add a little bit of water here to my, um, <laughs> my leafery here. I've got a little bit of that yellow that's bleeding in and that's okay. Gloria just shared, oh, would love for future paint alongs. Cool beans. I'm going to bring out some Perylene Maroon. Now, this Perylene Maroon color, no, Perylene Green, excuse me, is this color right here. I really love that. It's a, it's a dark, dark green. It's got black in it, so it makes it a really interesting color. I'm going to just drop some of this in, and it's really just kind of doing its thing. Um, and I'm kind of digging that. A little bit too much water, but that's okay. I'm going to work with what we have here and just kind of 
move it around a little bit. And we'll be able to go back in with some of the, just getting that first layer of color in. We'll be able to go back in and glaze, and I'll be able to add some of those details back in. But right now I'm just adding a little bit of that green. I want that perylene green. It's kind of like, a with, with the black in it, it kind of makes it a little bit blue-greenish. Blue and you can see when I add the detail in, we'll see it a little bit more. I'm going to come up here and just do some more. Oh, watch my lefty hand. Yeah, I'm going to come up here. We're going to just kind of do a little flick, flick, flick. I'm going to come around and use my brush to kind of create a little bit of leaves. Now, I had a little bit of a white, a uh, little bit of water up here, a little, and you can see that it's kind of blending and mixing in, and I love that. It getting that washy effect. We're just going to let it ride, let it ride. Okay, now I have some green gold here. God, I love this color. This color is so pretty. Oh, wow, it's like super, super pretty. Okay, some green gold. And then I have, I think that Joyce, that's Joyce's mother green, which is a little more olivey, olivey. And then I've got this Denise's green, which is more like a sap green with a little more black in it. So let's go ahead. Now, this brush is holding a lot of water. I'm just gonna come in, add a little bit of water here, here, and up the middle here. So again, the predominant technique that I'm using today is wet into wet. So the brush is wet, the paper is dry. No, the brush is wet, the paper is wet, and I'm just adding watercolor in and letting it do its thing. Now, if you're just getting started in watercolor or you're still building up your confidence using watercolor paint, the wet into wet technique is one of is really easy going because it's just dropping water in, then adding the paint, and then letting the paint do its thing. And often, you can see me cleaning my brush. I've got a little uh, microfiber towel over here that I'm just kind of wiping off the excess and getting that tip. Because I'm just going to use the paint that's here and just kind of draw that in a little bit. And leave some of the whites. Tap, tap, tap. Just tapping. So part of painting, the painting style for me, is like not painting and like kind of resisting the urge to do this swooshy, swooshy. And really just kind of focusing on using the tip and tapping color in. Back to the Pearly Maroon. If any of you have Daniel Smith watercolors, they have a perylene, perylene green, sorry, I keep saying maroon because we're going to use that color. Um, perylene green, they have a perylene green as well, it's a little bit more black. But one of my favorite greens from the Daniel Smith line is Cascade Green. It is one of the most beautiful greens um, that I have ever seen. Now, I'm brush is wet, paper's dry, and I'm going to show you like, here is the wet into dry technique. So you can see there's a lot more of a concentration of color. And I've just kind of applied that color there, but watch, clean off my brush, use what's there, and I can just kind of tap, 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 and blend it out. Just add a little bit of water to the edge, just kind of tap it and blend it into the inner part. So two ways to do it, wet into wet, which I'm predominantly using, wet into dry. Cascade Green with Daniel Smith is such a beautiful green, and it's got some blue in it, So when it, and it's granulate. So when it separates, it's got this like turquoisey feel to it. I'm just like completely nerding out. It's got this turquoise look to it, um, and I'll bring some of it in as we're painting. Cascade Green. 
it's got a little bit of black in it, green, and it's when it when it granulates and separates, it's got a little bit of a turquoise green blue to it. So it's got a retro, when you paint with it, it's got a retro kind of feel to it. Um, I believe on this channel and actually in my community um, at crafterjoy.com, I have a tutorial on painting the Luna Moth. The Luna Moth, this Luna Moth, and I used Cascade Green in that. I just nerded out about color, but hey, you get what you get when you're when you're watching. You get a little bit of nerd coming out. Now I've got, I'm going to balance out my greens a little bit. So I've got Paraline, Paraline Green matched up with the Denise's Green. I've got that Denise's Green here, and I'm going to want to bring that Denise's Green over here. And then I'm going to do Paraline green right here. So let's just go ahead and I'm just balancing it out a little bit because I've got green that uh, Denise's green right here that creates that little triad in my composition. Then I've got that Paraline green that I've used here, here, and here that kind of creates that little triad. Constantly like bringing your eye around the painting. Now that was a little, oops, that was a little bit of nerdy design chatter and composition chatter, which, you know, I am a designer, so you get that. Okay, friends. So wet into wet. This green, oh, it's juicy, 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 juicy. You see how I'm just kind of dropping it in? It's doing its thing. It's wild. It's wonky. Now, it is also, um, people, the, the comments that I hear from people about watercolor is they feel that there's a level of unpredictability with it. You can see with this brush today, I'm really kind of choked up on the ferrule here. This is the ferrule. Um, and I'm really kind of choked up kind of using it very much like a pen. And that's because this is a really long handle. If I was using probably the Princeton Heritage, I'd be back a little bit further. But you'll see me go up and back and just doing lots of different um, ways that I hold the brush. And depending upon how you hold a brush, you get different levels of control. Because I'm just kind of playing around here, you can see me moving my hand back and forth. But remember, it's it's based on your comfort level and where you feel comfortable holding your brush. Okay, now green, green, green. We're going to come over here and I'm going to do wet into dry. So my brush is wet. You can see I'm picking up a lot of pigment. And we've predominantly done this part of the painting in our skim milk layer and a little bit of the 2% um, layer. So there's more water, there's a little bit more water. We haven't really done a lot of this yet. We will when I go to add the details. So you can see right here how I'm adding a lot of water and I'm just letting that pigment kind of pull down here at the bottom. I'm getting a bit of a 2% milk value here. A little bit of less um, less water, a lot of pigment. It's not super milky, okay? So you just shared. That's how you tell us to use your stamps to groups of three. It's true. It's absolutely true. Okay, so I'm doing wet into, wet into dry, and I'm just using the brush to kind of create that shape. And then just kind of following the lines from my drawing. Now, that feels kind of harsh, but that's okay. We're going to clean our brush, and I'm just going to use the paint that's here and tap, tap, tap around those edges and just kind of pull that color in a little bit. But that outer edge ends up getting like the darker value of the color, and that's okay. I'm digging it. Loving it. I'm just kind of letting that be. I love. The more I add water to that edge, see how I can soften that? But I don't want to soften it too much. Okay, Catherine just asked a question. Let's just go ahead and pop up your question, Catherine, because it's a big one. 
So you were doing wet into wet for the darker green and wet into dry for the lighter green. Is that a function of the color or the highlighting? You know what? Really great question. Really great question. It is a function of, I just wanted to kind of show you, yes, a little bit of a difference. So I've got my three petals here and you can see I've got a little bit of bleeding happening here. And I have this color right here that I'm just kind of, I know I'm going to be adding some dark details over top. So you can see right here, these darker details that I'm going to add over top. So I want that value of color underneath it to be less vibrant, to be a lot more washy. And here, when I add the details over top, it's going to be less intense. So I'm just creating a little bit of contrast by doing some wet into wet and wet into dry. And it is, in this case, a function of the particular colors that I'm using because the perylene green has a lot more black in it. And if I went in with full, super full strength um, on the perylene green, I would, like I did here with the dry, um, wet into dry, it would almost come out like a little too dark, a little more black. Where the Denise's green, I'm able to get a stronger value without it being black. I hope that answered your question because I felt myself starting to nerd out about color. I'm going to rein it back in a little bit before I get too, too wonky, too wild and wonky. I've got some color bleeding here and see, I can see how I can go back in and just kind of add a little bit of water and just kind of let it do its thing. Let it wash out. Okay. Now, I'm going to save these for last. I think I'm going to do some berry details. We're going to come back in to our petals and come back in with some burnt sienna. I'm going to change brushes. And here's why. This brush, this is another great tip. So understanding your brushes and what they, how much water they hold is kind of important. Um, Catherine, great, super clear, she said. This Zen Art Faux Squirrel Brush holds a lot of water. It's very, very similar. You can't even read this anymore to the silver black velvet brushes I talk about all the time. These brush, this brush line I've had for like 15 years, 10, 15 years, holds a lot of water. Now, these Princeton Heritage brushes, I like them. I like them a lot. They hold less water, so they give me a lot more control. They give me a lot more control with my darks. So I'm going to switch. I think I'm going to switch. This is a number 10 Princeton Heritage brush. And I'm going to come in because this next round, everything is still a little bit wet, but it's not super, super wet. I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna. I love the Da Vinci burnt sienna. I actually love burnt sienna in a lot of different brands, but I really love this Da Vinci because it's just so vibrant. It's It skews a little brown, sometimes terracotta. It really does um, add a lot of beauty to your project. I'm kind of digging it. Look, I'm just going to start dropping in some lines, some line work, and some of it's going to start to bleed. Now, this might feel very, might make you a little tense, but that's okay. See, I'll just drop that in and I'm just going to tap in my edges here with a wet brush. I'm just tapping cleaning off, just wiping it off, not really cleaning the brush, letting that color kind of do its thing. If you get a hard line like I have right here, I'm just going to go in and soften that with a little bit of water and just kind of come back. So wet into dry predominantly because the brush is wet, the paper is dry, and look, when I let it do its thing, it's already just doing its thing and it's starting to give us um, a look and feel. This one, this line's a little bit harsh, so I'm going to tap out, tap this out a little bit, and maybe draw some of that color over. Just work with what I've got here. This line right here looks a little, 
little too, it doesn't have, yeah, it's a little harsh. So I'm going to come in and just add a little definition right here to the tip. Just kind of clean my brush, wipe it off. You can see this, this Princeton Heritage brush doesn't hold as much water. So it gives me a lot more control. And I, you can see I'm really choked up too. I'm kind of holding really, really close to the ferrule. I'm kind of choked up because it feels comfortable to me to try to do a little bit more controlled uh, effects. All right, now I'm going to go in. Now on some of these other petals, I want to add burnt sienna, but I'm going to kind of go maybe in the opposite direction. Now I am working in between, for my water ratio, I'm working in between these two. A 2% milk and a whole milk. So a, a lot more water than I have here, but not like a super intense amount of pigment. So I'm tipping the very, very tip of my brush in the top portion of the color. And I'm going to go here. You can see I'm dropping that in. It's a much darker value. I'm going to add some up here. I'm going to add some to the tip here. Now I know one of the questions I'm going to get is, how do you know where to add the burnt sienna? I'm just trusting my instincts and adding it where I feel like it's going to add a little bit of color. I might not add it to some areas. All right, I'm cleaning off my brush and this is all part of play. And I'm just going in and just tap, tap, tapping it out in this area where I feel like I've got a little bit too much. I'm just going to tap the edges there. This is our first layer. This is our glazing layer. This is actually, this is our second layer. This is our glazing layer. I'm going to leave, I'm digging kind of the way that looks. And oftentimes resist the urge to fix something that doesn't need to be fixed. You can see I'm just tapping. I'm using my brush like a little mop. And I'm just tapping that color and letting it do, do its thing. I'm actually really pleased with the variation of color we got going here. And I'm not going to really mess with it too much. Okay, now if we come back out and we start to look at these, you can see how washed out as they've dried. Um, you can see how washed out everything is. I'm going to let this dry and move on to some of the leafery. The water has, there was so much water here, it actually pushed back the color, the pigment. And that's why I've got that kind of harsh line there. But that's okay. We're going to come in with the Princeton Heritage brush and I'm going to take a little bit of that green and I'm just going to come in and just start to add some of my details. Following the line of my sketch, just adding some of those details in and then take a little bit of that color and just kind of tap that back in to those areas that really kind of dried back. Just tap a little bit of that back in. I'm just going to let this kind of freewheel it. All right, just add a little color, let some of that bleed, see what happens. This line right here that I kind of lost, I can bring it back. Just bring it back. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to move up to this one. We've There's not a lot of variation of color here. It kind of got a little bit flat. I do love how it mixed in with some of the yellow and the burnt sienna. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, just get a little bit of that Denise's green, which is kind of like that olivey green on the tip of my brush. Just add some of those details back in. And you can see the paper is still wet. So we're just going to glaze in some of those details and let them do their thing. I'd extend that tip out just a smidge, just to kind of get a little bit more of an edge there. I'm kind of loving how washy this is coming out compared to when I did this one. I also did a little bit of a different composition with this one, and the petal, the petals look less like little crab legs, which is kind of 
what I was going for. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this in wet into dry. My brush is wet, paper's dry. Let's see where we are. Okay. And then just add a little bit of detail back in. All right, while I'm doing this, I'm just going to chit chat. So, my next Gina K release is happening next Tuesday. Tuesday, friends. So, tomorrow I will be making lots of different samples. I'm actually wait, waiting for my stamp set to arrive. I think it's good, going to arrive today. We're going to move on to the Paraline color and do the same thing that I just did. So that's exciting. And if you, in case, just in case you missed it, oh, this color is so dark. But look at that um, texture. See, we've got those layers going. And I'm going to bend my brush a little bit here so I get a little bit of a variation of my line. And I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm, I lied. I'm going to just kind of tap the edge of this a little bit just to kind of soften that edge. That edge is already starting to bleed. I'm going to leave it. So what we've got here is some contrast in some what I would call like 2% milky look, a little bit of detail, but a lot of wash, and then a little bit of wash with more detail. So you get some contrast between your leafery. You got some things that are coming, popping out at you. They're a little bit darker and some things that are washing back a little bit further. So that's what we're going for here. Okay, so the Gina K release is happening next Tuesday night, 7 p.m., and it is the holiday release. And I think most of you were with me last week when I did my live. Last week I shared, this is the first time I've ever done a holiday stamp set. Normally I don't do holiday stamp sets because I like things to be a little bit more universal. But I'm excited. I'm really excited for this one. So um, I can't wait to share. Can't wait to share the samples. If you're on my email list, I'll be... Um, sending out details. Next week's tutorial will be a card tutorial and it'll, you know, there'll be watercolor involved. There'll be watercolor involved. Um, okay, so I've got that. Now, a little bit of Paralee Maroon. How am I doing on time? Doing pretty good. I'm going to come up here and then I'm just going to use the entire belly of the brush just to add another layer. Just to add, this is my easygoing way of doing leafery with a brush. Do, 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 do. We're going to leave that be. Now, while those are drying, I'm going to take, let's take a little bit of that Paraline Maroon, Paraline Green, I keep calling it Paraline Maroon, the tip and just kind of draw the draw the stems for the berries. All right. All this is still kind of drying a little bit. I'm going to come in with Paraline Maroon. Paraline Maroon. Finally. Just kind of draw these little circles with the very, very tip of the brush around the edges here just to create that little feeling. Probably gonna draw a few more. Little berries. I actually don't know that there would be berries with a sunflower, but hey, who cares? Okay. Now I'm gonna change brushes and I'm gonna come in hmm, maybe a number six. No. I'm going to come in with the number three for a little more detail. Now I'm going in for my third layer here and we're going to start to add a little bit of more details. I'm going to play with this a little bit. I've got quinacridone gold. My brush is wet. Paper's dry. There's going to be some areas that are wet. We're going to let it ride. And I've got, I'm going for more of a whole milk strength here. 
can see I've got not adding a lot of water. It's almost a little bit pasty. And hmm, let's kind of come in here and just add some color. See, I'm just dancing my brush around a little bit because I really just wanted to see what that color looked like and see if I like the way it's coming out. I'm going to add a little bit here. I'm just going into some of the areas where I had added the burnt sienna and I'm just adding this gold over top of it. My painting, everything's still just a little bit wet. Now, normally I would dry it in between to get that, um, that true glaze kind of effect by drying those colors in between. But the reason why I'm coming in with this quinacridone gold, and I'm going to mix a little bit, doing a little bit of gold and doing a little bit of sienna with some darker lines, is because this quinacridone gold, it kind of jacks up the colors that are underneath it. We're starting to get a little bit more luminosity. I'm going to blend that a little bit, just going back and forth um, with my brush. Let's come in and add a little bit of gold over here. Now, watercolor, when it dries, and especially depending upon how much pigment versus water, which is this, our water ratios, depending upon how much pigment versus water that we we're using, when it dries, it really does fade back. It fade back. The value of that color fades back significantly. So this glazing technique, you can see I'm just going back and forth with some water, helps jack up that luminosity of the painting and brings some of those details forward. I'm not super concerned right now about like every petal having intricate and intimate details. Um, I'm not concerned about that at all. I'm really just concerned about this painting being whimsical, wonky, a little bit of a little bit of fun involved here. And we're just kind of playing with our techniques a little bit. Now this part right here, I've got a little detail I'm going to add right there. And you can see I'm just picking spots in the petals just to add a little bit of that quinacridone gold, layering it with that burnt sienna, and it really is jacking up that luminosity of the color. Now, I see some harsh lines in my painting here. I see, I see like a harsh line right here that I'm not really digging, and that's okay. Just going to come in and I'll add a little bit of color and just kind of little bit of water and just kind of blend it out a little bit. You can always just take the tip of your brush, add a little bit of water, blend it out. Okay. So new release is happening next Tuesday. Super excited. So there'll be some more details coming out, sneak peeks and all the things. It's a big honking release, friends. Um, big honking holiday release. So super, super fun. All right, I think I'm going to leave it because I'm resisting the urge to kind of mess with it a little bit. I'm going to come in around here and add some details with some burnt sienna. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail around our edge so that we've got a little definition between the center. Bleed that out. My brush is clean. Just kind of tapping that in. Hmm, kind of digging this painting. Oh, there's like a little heart right there. Do you see it? Does everybody see that little tiny heart? <laughs> I love that. A little bit of signs from the universe. A little bit of love. Now, I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm going to leave a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm just going to dance the brush around a little bit just to add a little bit of texture. There's a brush called a rigger, R-I-G-G-E-R, -G -G -E that's really, really great for this kind of technique. Just kind of this loose and free line work. But I am rigger challenged because the brush is really long. 
like it's really really long and I um yeah I seem to always just kind of get a little messy with it I'm going to take a little bit of perylene green right here and just kind of connect some of those pieces that I did those little berries just make some connections here now I want to come back in see if I can get a little bit I, I think I'm good there's one more thing I might do with this painting, the sunflower. But right now I'm just going to add in, I'm going to come in with my perylene green, and I'm just going to add some line work with the tip of my brush. So see how that darkness, we can add some of that line work there. It brings a little bit of that texture. It also has that look and feel that is compatible with these two leaves down here. I'm going to add a little bit more line work right here, just using the tip of the brush. And you can see I'm holding the brush out a little bit further, just to get a little bit of, I actually really like the line work that I did here, but I'm just going to cover that edge a little. There we go. Now, I'm going to come in and do just a slight amount of line work with that, um, with those leaves. I'm going to pick up some of this Denise's green. It's like a sap green. I've got a full strength of this, like a whole milk full strength. A lot of pigment, less water. I'm just going to follow my lines. Just kind of add some of those li the line work in just with the tip of the brush. Yes, I'm loving it. Okay. Digging that, digging the way that looks. Okay. We're almost done. So see that full strength happening there? It's definitely going to help me with this leaf up here because this leaf, this piece of leafery kind of is flat like all of the color in there. There's a little bit of variation in the color, but it did get kind of flat. So with those details, those um, in the leafery, oh, I got one more thing I want to do here. With the details added on top, the line work, it kind of helps draw your eye to that center because you've got a lot of detail work happening on the outer edge it makes that center kind of pop a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to take my brush and do that little bit of line work right there around that edge. Look at that. I got Perylene Marine on my Perylene Green. I keep wanting to say maroon. Okay, now I'm kind of digging the way this looks. It's definitely got a fall color palette feel to it. I'm going to drop, I got some water going on up here. I'm just going to like let that kind of drop and let some of that color just kind of bleed. Just tap, tap, tapping it out. Just let some of that bleed later. That'll give us some of those, um, when it dries, it's going to be super nice. Now, a couple things I want to test here. I'm going to change brushes a little bit. Just a, a little bit of a bigger brush. I've got the Hansa Yellow Lemon. So this is like a lemon yellow right here. On the screen, I wonder if it really looks like this. On the screen, it really looks super day glowy, but it really is a lemon color. Um, Catherine, oh, thank you, Catherine. Super clear answer about the difference in colors. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow and I'm going to pop it in a couple spots because it's going to jack up the luminosity of color. So see how I'm just popping it in? Just popped it in, clean my brush, tap it out. Ooh, I got a little bit of green on that brush. Green and the yellow, not mixing. It's jacking up a little bit of that luminosity, just like that quinacridone gold did. Like, look at that. Look how luminous that is. All right, I'm digging it. All right, I'm going to resist the urge to do anything else to this painting because you can absolutely 
overwork your painting. Um, and I am pretty famous for absolutely overworking the paintings by keeping by keeping and going and going and going and trying to add more detail. Now, if I wanted to try to add more line work to the sunflower, what I would do is either A, wait for it to dry, or B, take a heat tool and dry it. Because remember, watercolor is going to fade back several values of color in its strength and its luminosity when it dries. When you're adding layer upon layer upon layer, that's what jacks up the luminosity. So I'm going to leave it be because I know that when it dries over time, I'm going to end up getting that effect that I want. Now, how do you know when to stop? Sometimes you don't. You just keep going. You keep going. That's all part of the process, and that's all part of learning um, and adapting your skills to, to the way you work. Okay? So there are times that I do paintings, and I keep going, and I keep adding layers, and I keep adding more layers, and then I've just created a muddy, yucky mess. So... I'm going to stop now because I'm liking the way this looks. Now, one of the things about this composition, I really like the way this looks. We've got that order of threes happening with the leafery. But remember, if you don't, if this is not feeling like appealing to your eyes, just turn your painting and see if it gets better. This is not better. This is okay, but the mix, it, it's not great in my opinion. I don't like it. Um, this could be better if I turned it this way. So it really has a lot to do with the composition of that flower too because it's super wonky looking. When I move it here, this is kind of the way I like it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to keep it this way. This was super fun. Um, I'm going to hold this up just in case you want to take a quick screenshot of the colors that we used. They are listed down below in the description. I believe all of them are listed. Um, down below in the description. But those are the colors we use. But remember, if you're painting this at home um, or on the replay, watching this on the replay, you just need some yellows and some greens and some browns from your watercolor set to create that um, kind of fall color palette. Okay, let's go ahead and head back to our front camera here. Okay, this was kind of my first paint along. Um, if you were painting along, and some of you were, I hope you had some fun. I would love it if you shared it with me. If you share your painting in social media, tag me, either Instagram or Facebook. Um, yeah, tag me. I would love to see it. Um, or you can email it to me, and my email address is down below in the description. And I get a lot of emails from all of you, so you can email it to me, and I'd love to take a peek. Um, okay. Okay. All right, friends, I had a ton of fun today uh, sharing kind of like this first paint along or sharing a live painting. I'm going to be moving forward as we move into the fall and doing this at least once or twice a month in conjunction with the watercolor techniques that I'm sharing with the paper crafting projects. Okay, so a couple reminders. If you're not on my email list, I would encourage you to jump on it. The link is down below in the description. I send an email out once a week, and I have a lot of different freebies that I share and exclusive discounts, especially with coming up with in October when I'm closing my online shop at indigojadeartshop.com. I'm going to be closing the store. Uh, subscribers are getting a healthy discount. Um, as I begin to sell off all of my inventory that's in my shop. Okay, and next Tuesday is the Gina K release. I'm super excited. You'll see a video on Tuesday, and I'll have another one next Thursday. Um, next Thursday or Friday? I'll have to double check. And the live is at 7 p.m. Central on Tuesday on Gina K's Facebook uh, YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. The live will be happening. Okay. All right, friends. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. If you're at all interested in my free community, head on over to craftyourjoy.com and you can uh, register live for my free community where I share a lot of other things that I don't share here. Okay. 
I think that was a lot. I'm glad everybody had a ton of fun. Uh, Kathy just said super fun, a little challenge to paint along, and I made some a few bloops. Hey, bloops are all part of the fun. Um, I am going to post, once this dries, I'm going to post this on my Instagram um, as well, and I'll be sending it back out in the email. Maybe, maybe I'll offer it up as a free print to my subscribers. Maybe. Okay. All right, friends, have a great day, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you got a lot of value out of today's lesson. Have a great one. Bye now.